Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. This story we're about to talk about is pretty interesting as well as vomit inducing. So, so please, if you're eating something, maybe stop or pause the video until you're finished. Okay, you good? Here we go. Usually when you think of mummies, you probably think of this or this or maybe this guy. But a tomb was discovered inside a hillside in Hunan province, China, and inside it was the astonishingly well-preserved body of Xin Shui, also known as Lady of Dai, who was the wife of the Marquis of Dai and lived during the Han Dynasty. Now, obviously, she, she doesn't look all that good, but keep in mind, she's over 2,000 years old, and for a 2,000 year old, she's pretty hot. This lady is like the Miranda Kerr of 2,000 year olds. Because while most thousands year old ladies have already turned into a human Slim Jim, researchers were shocked that Lady of Dai still had all of her hair and eyelashes. Her skin was not only intact, it was also soft. All of her organs were accounted for and she can still bend her arms and legs. After examining her body, researchers concluded that Lady Dai died when she was about 50 years old and she obviously had not been watching what she eats because she was overweight, she suffered from diabetes, high blood pressure, and a severely damaged heart. She was discovered to have been buried in more than 20 layers of silk and then sealed within four coffins packed with charcoal and sealed with clay. It was so airtight that bacteria could not even get in, which made her the best preserved mummy and by default, the hottest mummy ever. Now, I've said this in a lot of videos and I'll say it here as well, but I really don't feel good about researchers digging up old bodies in the name of science. I mean, most people choose the way they are to be buried based on their culture or religious beliefs. And yeah, I get that people digging up these guys don't really give a hoot about that, but it's a respect thing, you know? It's almost like there's a time limit. And if that passes, we can just go ahead and stop respecting the dead and just dig them back up. You know what, guys? From now on, I am absolutely rooting for the mummy curses to be real and all those who are disturbing their peace to be punished. I mean, think about it. How would you like it if 2,000 years later, they dig you back up, they, they put you in a lab, all the press is around, and they're poking at your body going, yeah, this person may have had one too many candy bars. I mean, a lot of you may not care because you're dead, but, but I care. So that's why I'm Team Mummy all the way. So let me know in the comments below, are you Team Mummy or are you Team Mummy Diggers? Next up, this story is just pee-inducing creepy. You know how I always say that little girl ghosts are the scariest things ever? Because first, they are tiny, and tiny creepy things are always more dangerous than big or normal-sized ones. Also, little girl ghosts are all, they're always so pale, and they can put their hair over their faces and walk around all faceless, and that's just terrifying. And every horror movie ever made has taught me that if one of these little girl ghosts wants to be your friend, you need to say no, run away, and at the same time lob salt bombs at her. So this story was sent to me about a woman named Hannah Butler and she was on a ghost walk one day and during the tour they passed by a location in East Yorkshire where the guide told everyone in the group that a little girl ghost was sometimes spotted looking out at sea waiting for her daddy. So Hannah was pretty skeptical of the whole thing but she decided to take a bunch of photos and one of the pictures showed this. Yep. That's a little girl ghost. And of course, long black hair, white dress, at least she's not soaked in water. Hannah was obviously freaked out, but for some reason she went back during the day with a friend and the guide, and they built a makeshift yes or no Ouija board thing and started talking to the little girl who said that she wanted to be Hannah's friend. And from that day on, Hannah says she kept seeing the little girl in her dreams. She keeps thinking about the little girl even though she's now hundreds of miles away. Hannah says she's now afraid of dark rooms because she feels like the little girl could just be standing in the corner, which she probably is. Also, she says that she feels guilty because she felt like she abandoned the little girl ghost by moving so far away. I, I feel really bad for this woman because she is basically living my nightmare. And if I was her, I would have to move into a place with no mirrors, no television, and I would keep super high powered flashlights everywhere because ghosts like dark places, right? So if that little girl ghost one day started coming at me from, I don't know, my computer screen or something, Something, I'm gonna solar flare the crap out of her. And finally, Dr. Stephen Hawking, who lately has just been a ray of sunshine. He said that we are living through the most dangerous time in the history of the human race, which I have to agree. He named overpopulation, climate change, and diseases as just some of the threats facing our planet. In an article for The Guardian, Hawking said, for me, the really concerning aspect of this is that now more than at any time in our history, our species needs to work together. We face awesome environmental challenges, 
fires, climate change, food production, overpopulation, the dissemination of other species, epidemic disease, acidification of the oceans. Together, they are a reminder that we are at the most dangerous moment in the development of humanity. We now have the technology to destroy the planet on which we live, but have not yet developed the ability to escape it. Perhaps in a few hundred years, we will have established human colonies amid the stars, but right now, we only have one planet and we need to work together to protect it. Also, Hawking just recently said that we've only got about a thousand years left on this earth and the only way to save humanity is to migrate to another planet. So yeah, like I said, just a ray of sunshine, this guy, but seriously, I don't disagree with him because it's true. It just seems like this, this whole world is just people hating on each other. You know, the best thing may just be an alien invasion and then we can somehow finally put our differences aside, listen to a speech about not going quietly into the night and then stand together against the common threat. So in the comments, guys, let me know, are you team mummy or team mummy digger? What would you do if a little girl ghost wants to be your friend? And what do you think? Should we try to save this planet or just try to get the heck off it as soon as possible? Thanks for watching, guys. See you.